What up, nerds? My name is Clay Cooper, and I'm the director of test prep at Prep Expert. I'm also a perfect scorer on both the SAT and the ACT. And today, I want to share with you my five best tips for the ACT's science section. The five tips that I'm going to cover in this video are, first, know what you're facing in the ACT science section. Second, understand the importance of practice in preparing you for the real thing. Third, start with the questions. Four, become a figure reading expert. And five, make sure that you understand an experiment structure. We'll take each of these tips one by one. Let me start with this first point. Know what you're facing on the ACT science section. So here at Prep Expert, we get questions from students and parents all the time about the ACT science section. Uh, students often think that if they're comparatively weak on science, they, maybe they shouldn't take the ACT. Uh, parents think the same thing, or students or parents think that if they're comparatively good at science, maybe they should take the ACT over, say, the SAT. But the truth is, the science section on the ACT doesn't really test or require subject matter knowledge in science. In other words, you don't need to be an expert in chemistry, physics, biology, any other scientific discipline in order to do well in the science section. What you do need to be able to do is to understand an experiment's design, understand what a control group is, what an independent variable is, a dependent variable, etc. You need to be familiar with why experiments are set up a certain way. You need to be able to, especially importantly, understand and interpret the information that's displayed in a figure or graph or diagram. That's tested throughout the ACT science section. So again, what you're facing on the science section is not a science test per se. It doesn't require you to be an expert in science. What you're facing instead is kind of like a science-themed reading section in which you'll need to read passages, understand what they mean from a scientific perspective, answer questions about the experiment design and especially about the data that's presented to you in that passage. So if you're not good at science, don't panic. You don't need to be good at science to do well in the science section on the ACT. You just need to read closely and pay careful attention to what exactly you're being asked. Once you know that, you'll be able to go back to the passage and find the answer. That's why scientific subject matter knowledge is not very important in the science section. My second tip for the science section is to make sure that you understand the importance of practice. So there really is no substitute for practicing vigorously and realistically on past ACT science sections to prepare you for the ACT science section that you're going to face. The science section on the ACT is pretty unique. Uh, there isn't a science section on the SAT. It may not resemble anything that you've ever done before. Not only that, it actually is by far the most strict in terms of timing of any section on the ACT. Most students have trouble with the timing in the science section. You really need to be able to complete every science passage within five to six minutes, except for the conflicting viewpoints passage, which you can take a little bit longer on. But to complete a science passage and all its questions within five to six minutes is extraordinarily difficult, especially to do it consistently, which you'll have to do if you want to finish the science section. So. The science section is unlike anything you've seen before, probably. It's extraordinarily difficult in terms of timing. You have got to be prepared for it on test day, and the only way to prepare for it, to prepare for these unknowns that you're facing, is to practice with old science sections. So I say this with regard to every section that I teach, from SAT to ACT, but it is most true with the ACT science section. If you want to do well on test day, you have got to make sure that you have taken some realistic dry runs through science sections from past ACTs. Practice realistically and you'll see it in your score on the real thing. My third science section tip is to start with the questions. So every science section passage is gonna have some text and some diagrams or graphs that precede the questions. Uh, the text and diagrams will come at the beginning and the questions come later. A lot of students read through all the text, read through the diagrams, look them over before they ever get to the questions. But since timing is so difficult in the science section, 
You can't really afford to do that. No one can. What we should do instead is take a brief look at the introduction, maybe skim it. You don't even have to read the whole thing. You don't have to read it in depth. Take a quick look at the diagrams and figures to get an idea of what they show and then get right to the questions before you've read the whole description. Once you get to the questions, you want to focus on specific questions, line or figure cited questions. That is, any question that refers to a specific line in the description or a specific figure that you've been shown. Those questions that refer to something very specific are usually the easiest ones to answer. You can look directly back at whatever they're referring to and find the, the evidence to support one of the answer choices. So we recommend that you skip to the questions after briefly skimming the introduction in the diagram and the text. Skip to the questions, focus on the line and figure cited questions first once you get there. And then once you've answered those, you will probably have looked at most of what's in the passage and you can attack the more general questions now. The questions that don't refer to a specific line or a specific figure. And again, once you get to those, having already completed all the line or figure cited questions, you've probably already looked at most of what's in the passage anyway and you'll be really Really well positioned to answer them. So if you want to save time in the science section and proceed through it efficiently, make sure you start with the questions. My fourth tip for the science section is to become a figure reading expert. Guys, there's really no getting around it. A huge portion of the science section is devoted entirely to answering questions about figures, graphs, diagrams, you name it. Visual representations of data are all throughout the science section. If you want to do well in the science section, you have got to be good at interpreting the data that those figures, diagrams, graphs contain. So with that in mind, set out to become a figure reading expert. Here's how you do that. Focus on building a procedure that you can fall back on every time you encounter a figure, diagram, or graph. In other words, you should follow the same steps every time you need to look at one of those. Those steps should be to start by reading the title and any other explanatory information that you can find. What I mean by that is read the title of the graph, if it has any labels or subtitles or legends or keys, start by reading those. Read them carefully. If you misread them or if you skip this step, then you're going to be in trouble. It's really hard to accurately interpret what's on a figure, graph, or diagram if you don't know what the title says. So once you've read the title and any other subtitles or explanatory information, you're not going to turn your attention to the axes. If it's a graph, find out what is uh, depicted on each axis. I always start with the x-axis because that's where the independent variable tends to be found. Uh, but you can start wherever you want. I start with the x-axis. I read the label on the axis so I know what's shown there. I then read the unit so I know in what quantities it's shown. I make sure that it's moving in the direction I think it is as you move left to right. And then I repeat the same process for the y-axis. So once you've read the labels of the axes, uh, you've taken a careful look at the units of whatever's measured on e each axis, and you've read the title information, you want to turn your attention to trends. Do you see any trends in the data? Now, you don't have to look too closely here. If you don't see a big picture trend pretty quickly, then don't worry about it. Just move on to answering the question. But if you do take a quick look and you do notice a trend, that very well may help you get a question correct. It may save you a lot of time as well. So to become a figure reading expert, make sure that you develop a rock solid habit of performing those steps in order. Read the title and any other explanatory information you can find. Take a good hard look at each axis to see what it measures and in what units and in what direction it's moving. And then look for a trend. If you can build a rock solid habit of doing those things every time you need to interpret a figure, graph, diagram, you're gonna do really well in the science section. My fifth tip for the science section is to make sure that you are rock solid in your understanding of the basic design of an experiment. So obviously you're going to be reading a lot about experiments in the science section. They are all throughout it. Just about every passage talks about an experiment or study of some kind. And so you need to be familiar with how they work if you want to do well on the questions. In fact, there are going to be several passages that specifically are setting out to test your knowledge of experiment design, how it works, how it should work what the purpose was of a particular feature of an experiment, why the experimenters did a certain thing, why they set the experiment up in a certain way. In order to get those questions right, you've got to understand the basics of how experiments work. Those basics cover things like independent variables, dependent variables, 
control groups, etc. You need to understand what each of those terms means. You need to understand that manipulating an independent variable on purpose is done to see if it has an effect on the dependent variable. You need to understand that a control group is something set up by the experimenter for comparison purposes. It's something to which they will compare their data from the manipulated groups in their experiment. You need to understand all of this information about experiments. Uh, it doesn't really change no matter what the experiment looks like. They all have common features like independent variables, dependent variables, control groups, etc. If you can read a description of an experiment, understand why the experimenters did certain things, tell the difference between similar but slightly distinct versions of the same experiment and understand especially why the experimenter changed the experiment from one version to another, then you're going to do really well in the science section. So those are my five best tips for the ACT's science section. Please don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful. You can also subscribe to Prep Expert's YouTube channel for other videos just like this one. In fact, I'd like it if you'd leave me a comment below this video and let me know what you'd like to hear about in our next one. We might feature your comment as the topic of our next video. So what do you want advice on from a two-time perfect score? You can also find in the description below this video a coupon code that you can use at our website, prepexpert.com, for exclusive offers on all of our products, from courses with myself or another instructor to tutoring if you'd prefer that. So until next time, keep working hard.